hi guys um welcome back to another video this is going to be a continuation of the previous video if you haven't seen it where we were talking about um our labor and delivery which wasn't really labor, labor. yeah <laughs> but we are back with a pregnancy q a that we asked you guys on instagram um, and a lot of you gave us a couple of questions or things that you'd like us to address uh, let's just get right into this video so the most asked question was how are you handling the sleepless nights yeah that was and no let's end with that one should we yeah let's end with that one then another question that was asked was do we discuss any roles before having the baby and now that we've been parents for like a month or two how's that going do we discuss roles i don't think we discussed roles we didn't plan i don't think we planned what to do because i feel like having a child is just like another dynamic in the relationship but i think it uh, it goes with your partner because josh is already a helpful partner like he treats this home like his home so when we had a baby it was just like oh, okay the baby is another element of the home that we need to take care of so we didn't really discuss it it was more of oh, okay no let me just change her nappy because we're used to tag teaming that's what i'm trying to say it's also a thing of not trying to wait to expect your partner to do something. Yeah. If you can do it, do it. And I think it's worked well for us because that's how we naturally live. In terms of expectations, expectations in parenting, I don't think I had, I don't think I had expectations. From an expectation side, I won't lie, zero expectations. Yeah, I don't I think have... like, I've just learned, also we just learned, if you put expectations, it's just gonna either one, hurt yourself or disappoint yourself. So I went into this with a very open mind. Like, okay, the baby's here. We've done the best we can to prepare. Mm -hmm. Now it's more of just, just be prepared for anything. Yeah, I didn't have expectations, but the thing is when you, be, when you become a parent, when you get pe pregnant, let me say that, when you expect it, a lot of people tell you a lot of, I want to say negative things. So that almost kind of becomes your expectations but mm. i told myself that I, told i'm not going to, i'm this, not going to yeah. let people's experiences define my experience before i go through it but i think the other thing we'll talk about later as well is similar to what you're saying about negative energy is i think we need to work on this thing as a society of how we communicate um, certain changes and things that will take place because especially to pregnant especially to women. pregnant women yeah. or it's more like Oh, dude, your wife, your she's gonna completely change. She's gonna become someone yeah. else. You're never gonna recognize her. Oh, oh when now you're not gonna sleep. Oh, it's gonna be so hard. And I understand people wanna help. prepare you. Yeah, yeah, prepare you. And I don't think people say it like to be malicious or whatever. Yeah. But it's just that the energy that I got and you got was that like people were just so negative. I mean, let's give you, like one example. We were shopping for a. A, pr uh, a cot, cot piss, yeah. yeah it's a cot piss. And we bumped into a friend of mine and she saw Mbali for the first time, uh, one of my clients. She's like, oh, don't waste your money. Don't yeah. buy a cot bed. You won't a waste of time. It. You're never yeah. going to need it. You're not that thing use is, it. the baby's going to sleep in your bed. You're, you're going to be breastfeeding. You'll be too tired. You know? Just and put the baby in your bed and get over it. That time know? she doesn't know me from a bar of soap and she doesn't know the type of person that I am. And she's telling me, this. I've been a mother for, I've got three kids, I've been a mother, you I'm know, so experienced, don't waste the money. So, yeah. so I didn't want, yeah, I didn't want people's expectations or people, what people went through to form my expectations. That's why I'm like, I didn't have any and I just wanted to go in with like a clean slate. I think that's the best thing you can do for yourself. The really? toughest part about the first two months or the first month. Okay, for me, um, it's more of when, when she's inconsolable. When she's crying and you're like oh my gosh what could be wrong you know when at the moment you don't have the answer to sort of like help her to relieve her if she's in pain so i think for me that's the toughest part and i think the toughest part was also when i heard her scream crying because there's a difference between crying and there's a difference between scream crying but i first heard her scream crying i was my heart my heart was just like oh my god <laughs> My poor child. I don't know. What about you? I think for me it was when she had colic. She didn't have colic. What's, okay, she what's the word? She was just gassy. She was just gassy. Yeah. Yes, you do all the tricks. You say do bicycles, yeah. rub the tummy, lay upside down. But if the gas is not coming out, the gas is not yeah. coming out. And you can tell that she is in pain. The easiest part. Oh my gosh. The easiest part so far 
I'm not sure. What's the easiest? Okay, part? I'll I'll say it. Babies are like clockwork. You change the nappy. There's only so much. You feed you them. Do. You burp them. Yeah. They go back to sleep. So now everyone keeps yeah. saying, no, newborns, new, to be honest, the newborn journey has been yeah, I think that's so the, pleasant. Yeah. You do those things and you put her to sleep and she's out for two, three, four, five hours. Yeah. So I think that's been the nicest part. Yeah, I think you're right, actually. That's, I think that's been the easiest part is that there can only be so many things that are wrong with her. There's been a lot of hard work that actually started going into us being the newborn and when Bali was pregnant. Mm. So... We are very routine people, so we actually use yeah. an app um, that we got from one of our friends. Shout out to Smash, he recommended it. Um, so it helps to just monitor and keep track of what's going to happen. Probably we'll put screenshots later, but yeah. so you're able to say, okay, our baby's sleeping. We fed the baby. The baby's awake now. Now that makes you be able to know, no man, this cries because she's hungry. Yeah. This cries because she's probably done the poop, or this cries because um, something else is wrong. So by keeping this app and this routine. It becomes a lot easier to know what's wrong, what do you need to do, and when do you need to do it. Yeah. Like now we know she's sleeping, so we can record this. Yeah. So that's what's also helped is getting a routine very, very early. Yeah. What's your daily routine? Highly organized or weighing it? Mm -hmm. So when, like what Josh said, when we brought her home, mm -hmm. we got her into a routine. So basically, you know that she needs to nap like four times a day. She needs to eat at least eight times a day so you literally space that out and he mentioned the app the app really helps us keep routine and this is not for everyone because i remember another friend of mine said that she tried using the app it just it was too much for her and she felt like she was just doing too much uh, for us we love it because it's so convenient because if she's crying literally you can check oh, okay she lost eight at uh, three hours ago it's time to eat yeah or, but but also we're able to plan our life what we like about the app is that it helps us track r the routine say for instance she was sleeping 16 hours yesterday today she only slept 12 hours yesterday she only slept 12 hours then you ask yourself okay what did we do differently yesterday yeah. and the day before then i can always go back to the app because it, it helps also with remembering stuff because i i hate having to now guess women's and realities what are myths and realities so like the things they said, if you don't do this, this will happen. If you don't do this, this will happen. You know what? Actually, <laughs> you know what? There's a lot. There's a lot of things. The one that I can say, okay, I don't think these are myths, but like in terms of what people tell you and what actually happens, I think let me look at it from that perspective. Things like you know how we are. We are Africans. And it's like we like using these. What are these things? These mooties that you get but it's, all those medicines if, if you that drink you, this yeah, yeah all those medicines that you can go buy at the pharmacy yeah, yeah those those pay one we did not use them guys <laughs> we did not even use one and people are always like no you have to use this to help with this you have to use this that's to help the one with for this. spirits um, yeah there's one like i'll put the picture it's that <laughs> yellow one red i'm sure you guys know it you, you know it we didn't use any of that guys and also like if you're using that it's good for you it, like and it's working for you great but for me i had the or for us let me say that for us it was more of if she's not sick like like what's the you know for me i to be honest with you i don't know what those what those things are for i and it was just the two of us josh and i and we didn't feel the need for it so we were like we'll only buy medicine if we need it uh, fathering newborn and bonding well, one of you guys asked me uh the inbox me directly and i can ask somebody as well no but i got an inbox oh, is it? yes oh, hmm. the question was hey josh do you feel like you're bonding enough with the baby and what do you do you know how are you handling that i'm not gonna lie it's very disappointing not to have boobs and milk <laughs> because one the baby sleeps so much the most of the time the baby's awake is when feeding and bali is the one who gets to feed it yeah look i I try always make sure I'm there to do the nappy change or the bath or put her down to sleep or burp her. So there's only so much you can do and I'm still jealous. I, I even said to Mbali, look, can we just buy formula so that I can feed her the formula and I can be able, because she's awake, she's looking at you and you're able to bond with her. So where I can, I will do my best to bond with her in those moments. Mm. But we also like 
try sometimes because I do pump, um, I do store my milk. So we do try for him to, I'll insert a picture, for him to also like feed her. Like sometimes, like there are just days where I'm just like, I'm tired of breastfeeding. Like I'm tired because it takes 30 minutes. I know 30 minutes doesn't sound like mm. a lot, but if you're doing it every three hours, it's, it's a, a lot. lot. And I think also, I think what was disappointing was, so we got the whole breast pump and stuff to breast milk, to pump the milk. Mm. You know when you think milk is going to come out of a boob? It trickles. Like, after 30 minutes, she's got like 60 mils. You're like, oh really, that's it? That's one feed, you know? So, <laughs> I, I thought I would be using the bottle to feed a lot more, yeah. but when I see the amount of energy it takes her to fill a bottle, I'm like, look, it's let's okay. just store that. We'll use it when you use it. It's not parenting the pandemic Par oh guys actually you know you know what ne? parenting in the pandemic has been a blessing it has been so nice guys like i think also i i think i also explained this in the hospital no not in the hospital in one of my previous videos where i was talking about yes. being pregnant yeah being pregnant and like keeping quiet just to have peace of mind like i feel like we have such a peace of mind because I told Josh that, look, I want us to parent the two of us in the at least the first month. At least the first month, can it be the two of us so that we can learn our baby? And because the pandemic happened, yeah. it made it that much easier. And people were not like, no, we're coming to help you, yeah. you know, all those things. It just made it that easy, that much. I mean, I'm not going to lie, not, and, I was and, afraid. Because, and not to say the help isn't wanted. Yes, not yeah. to say the help isn't wanted. But I, I, we just didn't want people in enforcing their beliefs and their things about how to raise babies because we wanted to learn our baby and how we find comfortable to parent. Now, the first explosion, you, uh, I think, you. yeah, we'll, we'll post pictures. You'll probably you, see them you, over here. You. But where are you coming from? You know, what the the you know what the weird thing is, ne? is that the day I asked you these questions, yeah. the person was like, how did you deal with your first explosion? In my head, I was like, oh, you know, we haven't experienced it. No, no, oh, nothing yet. Literally, like, the next day, we experienced the explosion. Stuff. I'm not going to lie. I know people are just like, oh, my God, their, their poo doesn't smell. It doesn't matter. I was disgusted. The amount of poop that I saw was just, it was disgusting. I really hated it. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> Mommy. It's so bad. <laughs> Say, Mommy, get close. It is so horrible. Oh my gosh. I can't believe this child. Ah, 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 ah. Woo, 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 I can't. I thought I could just hold it. Uh, uh. Ah. It's a bit much. <laughs> I can't. Please tie my hands. No? Got gloves. I took a diaper bag. You know how we're gonna get this off you, my dear? Huh? Huh? How are you going to get this off you? Hey! This is what you gave birth to do, eh? Oh, you, 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 my Hey! Hi, hi, hi! Uh, the first time we had to take out the inside of the car seat, wash it, the clothes. Like, we wanted to throw away the clothes, but I was like, no, let's let's yeah. try soaking and it. Look, we've we've saved a couple, but some were like, I no. I think we got tired of saving clothes. No, you know why we saved we them? To... Those are from Shumi. They were, they were very yes, nice. Really so it nice. depends where the where the clothes come no, from. It depends if we like no, I really like this. Yeah. But we we only also threw away black ones. Yeah. Oh, we must throw the one that's in the sink. Because we were like, ah come on. No. You like it. Okay. Yeah. But that's why we switched to But still yes, it's we a bit better. To, we used to use Huggies and literally those explosions were Would always go through, yeah. yeah. They're like with the pampers they go they still go through but it's not as bad as yeah. with the with yeah. the high like like with the pampers it'll just be her bottom that's wet with the nappy all the way up to the back yeah and with the everything else with the, with the huggies, huggies yeah. yeah postpartum depression i would say in the first month i didn't really i didn't go through anything i think i went through like baby blues i don't think i even told you this but there was time i was just crying and i didn't even know why i was crying and literally the next day i was fine I forgot what I was even thinking about, but it was just like one day. Oh, let me say something. I, I am getting sleep now. I don't think the sleep is the problem. And he's helping me. 
so sometimes i get thoughts of like man i'm tired of breastfeeding i just wish someone could take this and i've been offering but these services this, this i don't want to say burden but this task this task yeah every three hours i have to feed her and it gets tiring and sometimes that plays on your emotions so i don't think i personally went um, or i have experienced it yet um if i'm yet to experience it but i would say that i've had moments where i was just like yo uh -uh, i'm like i'm tired because also being cooped up in the house a lot of the time like it, it does something to your psyche and i used to tell him that i know because he used to be concerned a lot and be like this was when the peak was down where he was like no i'm concerned about people coming and stuff and i was like look i know you're concerned but for my sanity i would really love to see people because i can't go out to see people um, i mean we'd go on walks sometimes we'd even go out for lunch or breakfast this was when the peak was low again but i didn't mind people coming to see us because i was just like i need to interact with people for my own sanity so that i don't feel like i'm going crazy she i think really because now we're in december i think the shift of the second wave is actually what is really sort of hurting her yeah, emotionally it, yeah it, tr it triggered me because Not for her mind. for us really it's we you know festive you're always with people so i can see it even on her face and she's just through this thing of saying i don't want to i don't want to go back into that rut but I'm not okay and I, w I, I just want to see people and be with people, you know. Yeah. I'm tired of this routine of wake up, feed the baby, okay, it's, it's me in the middle of the night. Yeah, it's exhausting. And I think the best thing that you can do for yourself as a mom is to also admit it and to be open with your partner because sometimes this thing creeps in. Like the other day, I was telling him that I'm not okay. Um, I'm, I just find myself crying for no reason. I'm not okay. I don't think it's postpartum, but I'm not okay and he's aware of that so i at least make him aware so that i don't feel like it's you know i'm carrying the burden or the load alone so the last thing which is the sleepless night the biggest thing the, the biggest <laughs> are we getting sleep <laughs> oh my right. eyes are white not red white you know what the thing is name i, I don't want to downplay it actually but my thing is that every everyone and their mother went around telling me or josh that you're not gonna sleep this is the last time you guys are gonna sleep the rest of your life for the rest of your life your sleep is not gonna be the same anymore and you know what i did during the pandemic especially i put all my energy into reading about sleep training a baby like people pushed it so far up like people made it like you the greatest thing about having a baby yeah like you're not gonna sleep at all i was just like Mm -mm, god this is not my portion this cannot be my portion i need to sleep like the first couple of days vele you don't sleep because it's that thing You're of anxious oh the baby is you know is she, is the ba are you is breathing she, you know like breathing? Doo, doo. is she fine you know all those things but i i don't have that anxiety anymore but once we implemented our routine and once she got used to it literally she's been sleeping and she sleeps like clockwork the days that she doesn't sleep like clockwork we're like okay what's happening why is she not sleeping okay let's work at it let's tweak this a bit let's tweak this a bit mm -hmm. and but my point is she gets sleep and i think what i want to say is that we're fortunate enough that she doesn't have co colic colic mm -hmm. she's not a colicky the baby reflux as well. and reflux yes so those are the two biggest ones that keep babies you know Up. Up. or you as parents up because oh, you're worried you as yeah. parents up because you're worried she didn't have any of those so because we didn't have to deal with those it was very easy for us to form a routine and for her to be able to learn how to sleep on her own um how to sleep how train, to soothe herself how to soothe sleep. herself we, we try to change a lot of like little things um so that she also learns how to sleep on her own so that we're not always like um, we're not dependent on certain things yeah, we're to not be there to, uh, to, to help her fall asleep like we didn't we don't rock her do not rock her because we don't want her to be dependent on us rocking her for her to fall asleep the other thing is that um i know a lot of babies use uh, pacifiers to fall asleep she doesn't even keep it in her mouth things like that and then the other thing is that we implemented the routine that we spoke about 
um it just makes it easy literally we just put it down and we walk away whether she's half asleep or she's wide awake she will end up falling but, asleep but basically we did a lot of research and these are things that have helped us like now we are able to record this video knowing that she'll sleep knowing that hours. she'll sleep for the next two hours and currently at night like l last night was the first time when she did a seven hour stretch she usually goes for like she was doing five hours there was a time when she did six so she's slowly transitioning into being able to sleep longer hours at night but we get we're getting sleep guys we are getting sleep and i feel like you need to prepare yourself for it the one thing that really worked early early in the first month that was a major question is guys when the baby sleeps sleep yeah so even during the day me and bali take like we interchange and what she also ends up doing what the app has helped is because you know when the next sleep is you can like because i was working and studying late i would say babe i will take a nap between 2 p.m to 5 p.m then i will be able to push through the night while she's napping so knowing your baby sleeps and you sleep that also helps mm, a lot helps. i think the first month we napped a lot mm. during the day yeah not so much now because uh, uh, she is doing longer, longer stretches sleep, at yeah. night so yeah that's that's basically it but if you don't have a dishwashing machine oh, oh, wow. guys <laughs> I know these other videos about okay guys thanks for watching if that helps a lot so yeah that is it uh, let me let let me know if you guys want to know about in detail about the sleep training and what we did um to help and her. any any other interesting things you guys yeah, want to know because like there's a lot of stuff that's happened hey yeah any other and even like now we're trying to see what i'm going to do when she's three months what do you do when Bali goes back to work mm -hmm. how how our life's going to change next year mm -hmm because like this safe phase is almost finished so yeah. do let us know what you want to hear yeah any topics that you want us to like discuss in terms of parenting or yeah so thank you so much i really hope that was informative to you guys and helpful you can be a oh yeah another thing you see we're not panicking <laughs> she can do this for 10 minutes she was not gonna die She'll yeah, be fine. She'll be fine. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and it was informative that it helps you in some way to also give you a peace of mind because I feel like a lot of newborn mm. parents are uh, scared because people scare them. Always try to remain positive. Be calm. The baby feeds into that energy and if you are a panicky ba um, parent, your baby will feed off of that. Mm. Trust me, take that nine months to ready yourself. Yeah. In different ways than people always think you yeah. are like you're not gonna sleep no don't focus on that start focusing on how can i be ready to bring this child into this new world yeah yeah, yeah. anyway but anyway thank you so much guys for watching please subscribe we love you guys and